So uh, as Frank uh, said that my uh, lab has been working on a uh, uh, number of uh, biological process of parasite biology, particularly P. falciparum. Uh, the main aim is actually to, to really identify novel targets and then uh, develop uh, newer drugs because there has been a limited uh, number of drugs against malaria. Uh, I'm not able to move. Uh, I am having a little problem in uh, moving the slide. I don't see it either. Uh... Okay. So uh, why uh, up for the up to last 50 years, there has been very limited number of discoveries with regards to new antimalarials. And there is a now uh, lots of information that there's a resistance coming towards the two uh, antimalarials which are being currently used. There are other antimalarials also and the resistance is creeping against almost all the antimalarials that are existing up till now. The reason may be, uh, there are a number of reasons for that, that why we have not been able to develop uh, newer drugs and vaccine but in particularly, because parasite has a uh, complex life cycle. It has, in human host itself has uh, there are two uh, sites where parasite infect. One is liver and other is the RPC stage. And there are also surface protein undergo a lot of polymorphism uh, uh, in parasites. Second, the second host mosquito also, we are now seeing there are a lot of uh, resistance coming to in in insecticides. Even after five uh, decades of research, uh, as you can see in this map in 2020, up till 2020 also, there are about 200 million cases all over the world, particularly in Africa. And P. Vivax is most prevalent in Southeast Asia and South America. So we really require newer drugs as well as vaccine if possible. Also, although a very highly effective vaccine is still eluding us. So uh, my group for the, long, for the last 20 years, as Frank mentioned, uh, has been working on number of uh, different aspects to understand parasite biology. Today, I will be presenting the first two uh, uh, experiments uh, that are presented in this talk. One is that how parasites uses hemoglobin and forms the hemozoin. These are very essential process in the parasite life cycle, that hemozoin formation. If we try to block it, hemozoin uh, parasite doesn't survive. So uh, today's talk will be focused on how the parasite uh, forms hemozoin and the two current antimalarials which are being used, chloroquine and artemisinin, are acting on this pathway. But we need to discover more targets and in this pathway also and to identify newer drugs. And uh, we have also worked on how these drugs work, what is the mode of action of this, which is the topic of today's my talk. And we have been trying to, we have recently illustrated that proteasome uh, system is again targets of artemisinin uh, in the parasite. In addition, we have illustrated the secretory uh, secretome of plasmodium parasite, P. falciparum in particular, and we have identified uh, nice uh, immunomodulatory proteins which actually uh, are uh, very useful for the parasite to survive in the system. In addition, we are working on, as Frank said, on the novel receptors, and we have been very uh, successful in identifying two of these receptors, and the work has been published in NatureCom. And as I mentioned earlier, that we have uh, been working on malaria vaccine development. All over the world, number of labs have been working, and and really effective vaccine has been uh, eluding us. So we have recently been able to develop a whole parasite-based vaccine uh, on, on mirozoid stage. And this uh, strategy seems to be working nicely uh, as, as, a, as a result of complex uh, parasite proteins. So uh, recent findings of our lab, which I am going to present, that mode of action of artemisinin chloroquine, the second finding has been, which has been recently published in PLOS pathogen, 
that we have been able to identify the pathway how parasite enters how parasite glides into the rbc system another thing which we have been successful recently using proteomic approaches is to uh, understand the whole merozoid surface proteomics uh, the surface proteomics why we are studying is because this will help us to really understand how parasite invades and then will lead to the the vaccine if possible that's our goal and another thing which we have recently be able to find using quantitative proteomics mars for the sphere marine so these are the four uh, recent findings from our group which we are trying to take into the uh, translation uh, mode so the first uh, as i mentioned in the topic the mode of actions of artemis thing before i begin to that i will like to say that we have been studying the mechanism drug mode of action of different drugs and one of the real success we had earlier was on our, our mactin how our mactin works we were able to show that our mactin actually which is the drug which is also being used in uh, covid that this, this drug actually blocks actually uh, particle components protein particularly if you see this one of the proteins which we have used srp14 what we have shown here that normally this protein is present in both uh, cytoplasm and nucleus so there is a shuttling but what this drugs does in parasite it blocks the shuttling of proteins which are which constitute the signal recognition particle so this was the mechanism we published and we feel that the similar mechanism exists in case of lower uh, in case of viruses also and in case of uh, bacteria also uh, so uh, to understand the mode of action of artemisinin uh, and chloroquine we have uh, long time ago about 10 years back we started studying that how parasite actually uses hemoglobin and before i move to the real part of my story today i will like to for the benefit of the listener i want to tell you that the mode of action of drugs is very different than mode of resistance which which has happened with the with the drugs if you see this slide carefully mode of action of these some of these drugs which are being used is actually actually the food vacuole which is the hemoglobin degradation pathway and one another drug which is atropine it acts on the mitochondrial pathway and the uh, uh, dhfs acts on, uh, dhps and dhfr acts on the uh, folate pathway but the mode of resistance actually is dependent on the receptor uh, on the transporters which are present on the food vacuole and we know now very nicely that there are two transporter pfcrt and pfmdr1 which act, if you see the left hand panel which actually are reason for the getting resistant toward the chloroquine but we still don't have clear idea we didn't have the clear idea the how art artemis in resistance is coming only uh, one mechanism which is the kelch uh, protein which has been shown to be responsible for bringing the artemis in resistance so uh, our work about 10 years back we started working on food vacuole some of you who have seen the uh, uh, parasite in the microscope you can see a dark pigment in the in the center of the uh, parasite and this we refer to as hemozoin so hemozoin is actually formed from hemoglobin if you see the left hand panel i have shown the food vacuole what is known up till now up, what when we started work what was known that hemoglobin is degraded by the uh, enzyme called plasmapsin which is an aspartic pro protease and falciparin2 which are the uh, cysteine protease and it is broken into globin and heme and this heme is converted into hemozoin and the globin fragments is further fragmented by different proteases and these amino acids are used by parasite so if we stop this process of hemoglobin degradation or hemozoin formation the parasite actually doesn't survive uh, right hand panel shows you the crystals of hemozoin which has been shown that they are very important and if you see very nice uh, this one that that food vacuole is a very important organelle where this whole hemoglobin degradation takes place and it is also very much essential 
for bringing the osmotic balance in parasite life cycle. So uh, about five to six years back, we studied the trafficking of uh, falciparin to one of the major hemoglobin agents, which degrades hemoglobin. And we have targeted this molecule for the newer drug discovery with different labs around the world. So one of the target we have been on the pro-domain of this, uh, this molecule, this is a cysteine protease. So we have tried to target the pro-domain. If you see the B, the right-hand panel, the B crystal structure of falciparin 2, we have tried to target the hemoglobin binding domain of this molecule and try to develop inhibitors against the active as well as hemoglobin binding uh, uh, portion of this uh, falciparin 2. So uh, in 2013, we were able to show for the first time that there is a complex of hemoglobinases by, uh, by uh, proteomics uh, and LCMS, MS analysis. We were able to show that a complex of hemoglobinases along with an important protein called heme detoxification protein, which exists in food vacuum. And this complex we could show by gel filtration and glycerol gradient that this is around 250 KDA complex consisting of four proteases and one hemoglobin uh, de uh, detoxification protein called HDP. And we could show that this complex by immunoprecipitation followed by Western as well as by on the, on the crystals, we could show this protein together the falciparin antibodies by ebino em were, were existing on the this crystal suggesting that this hemoglobin hemoglobin when it is degraded actually is causing hemoglobin uh, once it degrades the heme actually gets crystallized and it is you can see the falciparin too on the hemozoin crystals so we thought that since we know that there are these are the proteins which are responsible for the hemo hemozoin formation, we try to develop an assay, in vitro assay. So we made recombinant uh, HDP protein and falciparin 2. We could make other proteins and we put them together uh, uh, in a test tube along with hemoglobin under certain condition. And if you see the left-hand panel, we were able to create the hemozoin crystal. If you see the right-hand panel, by uh, scanning electron microscope, we could show that it really represents the hemozoin crystal. So we were able to recapitulate the process of hemo, though we, uh, to, uh, to not the efficiency which happens in the parasite because we only use two recombinant protein, but we were able to recapitulate the whole process of hemozoin formation in an appendrop tube. We did thousands of reactions to show that how this uh, hemozoin formation occurs. And then uh, based on the, uh, hemozoin formation, we tried to find out how chloroquine and artemisinin acts uh, in, and blocks the hemozoin formation. So since we had these, two these three reagents with us, so we tried to block this process. And we could, you can see in the left-hand panel, neither artemisinin and nor chloroquine were able to affect the activity, the, uh, the protease activity of the falciparin. However, we, uh, if you see the right hand panel, we were able to see that chloroquine was able to block the binding of falciparin 2 towards to the hemoglobin. So that was one of the findings which we could show by our in vitro reaction. Then we did number of reaction by adding uh, HDP falciparin 2 together, then adding HB, and then in between adding drug. AR, we, were incub we incubated falciparin 2 with drug and then I added HDP plus HB. Similarly, we again did falciparin 2, HB plus drug, and then HDP. And based on these number of reactions, we could show that chloroquine acts at both the process, at the protease level, as well as at the hemozoin formation level, while artemisinin is acting only at the uh, formation of, from he heme to hemozoin formation. So based on this in vitro reaction which we developed, we were able to illustrate that these two drugs, chloroquine and artemisinin, are acting on this pathway. Some of this was known, but there was no experimental proof earlier existing. So we were able to provide the experimental proof that these two drugs are acting on this pathway of hemozoin formation, which is 
has been shown to be an essential pathway in parasite. So this, we propose a model based on our, this work that the, this about four proteases along with HDP, a heme detoxification protein, they exist in the food vacuole in a complex. And we could show that chloroquine acts by inhibiting the falcipin 2 HB binding so that Falcipin 2 is not able to uh, degrade HB. And artemisinin and chloroquine are also acting from heme to hemozoin conversion process. So this was one of the mechanisms we were able to illustrate for these two drugs. And this work was published in uh, PNAs and a commentary was also given by Daniel Goldberg on, on our work. And he uh, referred this complex art as degradocyclostrophone. Then uh, this SAB has been used also by MMP to understand uh, various uh, mode of action of drugs on the, uh, this hemozoin pathways. Uh, recently, about two to three years back, one uh, uh, Kenyan PhD student joined us and he said, I want to work on proteasome shuttle proteins, though our lab was not working on this pathway, but he was quite insistent to me and he also said, sir, we, we think based on his previous work in the lab in Africa, he said that we think that some, uh, these drugs are also working on some of these, uh, in, on this pathway. So I said, go ahead, please. And uh, this is the uh, uh, proteasome, ubiquitin proteasome system, which is existing in most of the eukaryotes. Very well known system. Uh, it is the principal pathway uh, to monitor the uh, protein quality. And uh, there are three shuttle proteins which actually take the ubiquitinated protein to, to, uh, uh, towards this system, proteasome system, so that these proteins can be degraded. And we know that this protein has been one of the protein of these shuttle proteins. There are three shuttle proteins. I'll come in my slides. And one of the proteins, shuttle protein DD1, also has another function. It is a DNA da damage repair protein. And one of the drug, which is called botizomy, so that is being used against this system in case of cancer. So based on all these evidence, uh, NOVA started working on this system. And this uh, slide shows you the three shuttle proteins, which are actually present in most of the eukaryotes. And we could also identify their genes corresponding to this in the plasmodium falciparum genome. This is PFDD1, which I said, uh, also has a property of DNA damage uh, uh, repair protein. Others are PFRAD23 and PFDSK2. These are the shutter protein which take the ubiquitinated protein towards the proteasome machinery. And then uh, lower panel shows that PFDD1, which is one of the DNA damage repair protein, as well as the shuttle protein, has a structure which is similar to the human. It has two domains. Uh, one is the uh, retro, retroprotease domain and other is uh, uh, ubiquitin binding uh, domain. And, but the, the counter homologue of this protein PFDD1 in the yeast has another motif in the end, which is not present. It is UBA motif, which is ubiquitin associated motif, but which is absent in human as well as in uh, plasmodium PFDD1. So uh, why, why we are uh, we started working on PFDD1 and other shuttle protein. One thing is that it, this protein was shown to be essential in P. bergii. The second thing is that it has a retroviral protease domain, which uh, we thought that if this is an important protein, we can develop inhibitors towards this protein also, as it is very essential. And this protein uh, by transcriptome studies has also been shown that it, it induced when the parasite is treated with dehydroartemisinin or artemisinin. And this is expressed also at uh, the three blood stages, ring, trophozyte, and schizone stages also. So what uh, No did was that he expressed uh, first PFDD1 protein, and we were able to express and purify. Only problem was that we were able to get two fragments of these. And uh, uh, we when we did the mass uh, spectrum, uh, mass LC, CMS-MS studies for these two fragments, both belong to PFDD1 and both have the retrovirus 
uh, protease domain intact. And then we raise antibody to this protein and you can see that the protein stained the parasite beautifully and most of the staining was in the parasite cytoplasm, though we could find some staining overlapping with the nucleus. I'll come back that what is actually why it is present in both the areas. I, we personally feel that this protein is doing dual function in parasite. It is also working as a shuttle protein. That's why it is in cytoplasm and it is also a DNA damage repair protein. We have the data now to show you that how it is uh, doing the, this dual job. So we, uh, since we have this protein, purified protein, we uh, actually studied its activity since it has a retroprotease domain. So we did retroprotease substrate, proteosome substrate, and we also use casapsin uh, substrate. And we were able to show that protein is active. It is for both retroprotease substrate and non-proteosome substrate, but its affinity is more for the retroprotease substrate. And then we also did uh, with a non-specific protease uh, to know its protease activity because up till now, nobody has shown its protease activity. Everybody believed that it, it doesn't show any protease activity since we were able to get this protein in a purified form, recombinant protein, were able to show activity for the peptide substrate. Then we started with the BSA and we could see that this protein, protease is active for the BSA also, but at a pH 5. Uh, four, not at PS7. And I must tell you here that similarly, Leishmania protein has been also purified and characterized. And this that has also has shown similar activity in case of Leishmania. So we were, we were sure that this protein has activity. And then if this protein has activity, does it binds? Artemisinin binds to this. Then we studied various DNA damage protein uh, inhibitors uh, the, the inhibitor will bring the DNA damage as well as artemisin, uh, lepinovir, which is a anti, uh, this is a protease inhibitor, and other drugs to study the binding affinity with both BLI methods and SPRI. And we could see that this protein binds to artemisin uh, uh, very nicely, beautifully in a dose-dependent manner. Although other um, bound, but its affinity was highest for artemisin uh, for this drug. And as a control, we use other protein and they were uh, heme detoxification protein and they didn't show any binding to some of these drugs which I mentioned here. So uh, then uh, my colleague uh, Dinesh Gupta uh, and his uh, student then studied the affinity of this protein with the artemisinin by modeling and they were able to spin point, yes, indeed, artemisinin interacts with the protease domain of PFDD1 as we, they actually provided a proof to our data, uh, the binding experiment, that this protein indeed binds to the, uh, uh, to the artemisinin. And then they also studied, uh, these are the other drugs which you use, lopinavir, artemisinin, and this is methyl methane sulfate. This is another DNA damage protein, which we were able to show that they also, this is the structure of the inhibitor, which we use. And they have some affinity, but better, best affinity we would show of this uh, DD1 with the artemisinin. Then we studied the artemisinin uh, blocks or inhibits the activity of uh, PFDD1, uh, ret uh, the retroprotease activity. Indeed, we were able to show that both protein, protease substrate as well as retropepsin, uh, retropepsin substrate are uh, digestion is inhibited in presence of PFDD1 in presence of artemisinin. So artemisinin is blocking the protease activity of these uh, two substrates. And also we could show, yes, indeed, uh, artemisinin was able to block the BSA uh, in, uh, digestion also by mediated by PFDD1. So one of the function of artemisinin that it blocks the uh, protease activity of the PFDD1. And uh, while we were studying this, a study came in NatureCom, which showed that artemisinin actually causes the uh, accumulation of polyubiquinated substrates in the parasite. So we thought we should study also. We, we got an uh, uh, ubiquinated substrate from the uh, stigma, and we studied that again, 
activity of the uh, uh, PFDD1, and we could show that PFDD1 degrades the poly polyubiquitous substrate. If you see the B panel, where the sec uh, third lane, you could see that it is blocking. It is uh, PFDD1 is able to digest the polyubiquitous substrate. But when we put the DHA, artemisinin, and lapinavir, this uh, digestion was quite a bit blocked uh, by the artemisinin. So it clearly shows that uh, PFDD1 cleaves the, the polyubiquitous substrate and all, uh, artemisinin blocks this uh, cleaving activity. We could show the similar in vitro when we treated the parasite culture uh, with DHA, artemisinin, and MMS. And we could study this polyubiquitous proteins in these parasites. If you see the uh, ALA, A, A, uh, panel. If you see the first control and compare with DHA artemisinin, you could see uh, that there was accumulation of polyubiquitous substrate in these uh, treated parasites as compared to the control DMSO. And this accumulation was probably due to blockage of PFDD1 protease activity. Now the PFDD1 was not able to uh, bring the cleavage of polyubiquitous substrate. So these results clearly indicated that PFDD1 is an active protease which is present in this, and uh, artemisinin is blocking the protease activity of PFDD1 in, in within the parasite as well as in vitro in a ubiquitous substrate. But then, uh, since I have mentioned that there is another function of artemisinin, uh, this one uh, PFDD1 that is DNA uh, damage, damage repair function. So we, uh, we wanted to study whether similar function artemisinin is also blocking. So if you see this panel, we, were, we did a tunnel assay and we, uh, in presence of, if you see the top panel and the bottom panel, uh, right, uh, right hand panel and left panel, in the control we could, uh, in the absence of artemisinin, there was no DNA fragmentation seen. But in the left panel, if you see, we could see the fragmentation of DNA in a, in a tunnel assay by artemisinin, suggesting that, that artemisinin also causes DNA fragmentation in parasite. That's why it's a powerful drug. It's a fighting drug. So it not only blocks the activity of PFDD1, it also causes DNA damage in the parasite. It causes DNA fragmentation in the parasite. This uh, people have shown by other methods, but this was the first report we have shown that in the tunnel assay, artemisinin induces DNA fragmentation. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, we wanted to link this, whether DD1 has any link with this kind of activity. We have shown that PFDD1 is localized mainly uh, in cytoplasm as well as nucleus. And uh, there was hardly little of DD1 is present in the nucleus. But when we treated this parasite and stained with PFDD1 antibody, if you see the panel uh, of uh, DHA treatment, artemisinin treatment, and LPV treatment, there is a shift of the total PFDD1 uh, recruitment happens towards the nucleus. Now you can see hardly any DD1 in the cytoplasm. Clearly mentioning now that P uh, parasite is using DD1 to, to actually uh, cause the, uh, to bring out the DNA damage repair, which is uh, a function of DD1. So DD1 actually is playing both the roles. It, it is a protease which, which actually breaks the ubiquitinity uh, substrate so that proteins can be recycled. And the second, it is also playing a uh, role of DNA damage rep uh, repair. So what happens when artemisinin treatment happens? The ubiquitin function is uh, the of the PFDD1 shuttle protein function is almost nil because the protein is moved towards the nucleus so that it can perform the function of DNA damage repair. And you can see this is very clear in these slides, which is IMARI's picture, which clearly showing that now the whole the, the there is a complete uh, localization. Uh, of the uh, DD1 along with the nuclear staining. So uh, is uh, DD1 is a true homologue of yeast uh, DD1. So we, we again they did a yeast complementation assay with one of my uh, colleague in ICGB, Dr. Naseem Gore. 
and uh, in uh, unfortunately the this protein is not uh, essential in yeast though people have developed as say that as soon as you knock uh, down uh, knock out this gene in yeast there is a uh, secretion as say there is an increase in secretion of uh, protein secretion in this uh, in the yeast so what we did we used the similar assay and we complemented parasite dd1 in the yeast uh, knock uh, knockout uh, dd1 yeast knockout and we could see that there is a some decrease uh, increase in secretion so parasite dd1 was able to complement this uh, function of uh, uh, saccharomyces dd1 clearly suggesting that parasite dd1 is a homolog of yeast dd1 and then this assay we repeated uh, with other shuttle protein which i have mentioned they were not able to bring back the secretion function as compared to dd1 then we uh, treated this uh, dd1 deficient yeast with the drugs which we are uh, which i mentioned earlier with the uh, dna damage drug hydroxyurea mms capto uh, captothepan artemisinin chloroquine and lpv if you see this slide carefully artemisinin was able to act this yeast cell where yeast cell which are where the dd1 has been knocked out has been very sensitive to artemisinin it means there is a link between dd1 function and artemis uh, and the uh, artemisinin affects while chloroquine and uh, lepinavir were not able to uh, Uh, there was no change in the sensitivity towards uh, these drugs in uh, in the dd1 knockdown yeast but uh, we were surprised to see that when we knocked down rad23 the other shuttle protein as well as dsk you will find now the chloroquine uh, sensitivity increased and lpv sensitivity increased but there was not much effect on the uh, artemisinin sensitivity clearly indicating that chloroquine is acting on the other two shuttle protein while artemisinin is acting on the pfdd1 which has dual function on the proteasome system one is that it is a dna damage repair protein another is a proteasome shuttle protein based on this uh, we now think i will bring that somebody out that this uh, proteasome uh, system ubiquitinated proteasome system is also the target of chloroquine as well as artemisinin along with the, that it is a target of also the food vacuum machinery is also target of these two drugs now you might say that why we are working on this uh, hemozoin pathway on also on the proteasome shuttle system because as i mentioned earlier that both these pathways hemozoin formation or hemoglobin degradation Uh, are very essential for the parasite survival and if we try to block this by any inhibitor or any the parasite doesn't survive and also i have shown that knockout studies have shown that pfdd1 the proteasome shuttle system is also essential for parasite life cycle that's why we started uh, these studies so that we can target these proteases uh, for the new drug discovery so one of the protein that i mentioned is called heme detoxification protein we were able to identify it from a maybridge cambridge library an inhibitor although it is acting at sub micromolar range at present we are now with the other company we are modifying this uh, molecule so that we can uh, develop a drug at a uh, nanomolar range and this work we could publish in journal of medicinal chemistry we could show that heme detoxification protein is an important protein for the new antimalarial discovery now we have been now parts of uh, international and national consortium for, this, for targeting these proteins particularly food vacuole protease protein and recently we are also thinking of pfdd1 for the newer drug discovery and so these are some of the published paper in this regard and uh, but the important finding recently along with dr asif ahmed and Uh, one of the scientists that uh, ashish bhattacharya who is a synthetic chemist we we try to target this uh, complex which we have shown in our earlier study by by a drug so that it can acts on both pathway hemoglobin degradation 
and he he uh, to hemozoin pathway and uh, ashish has been working on artemisinin for a long time he was able to develop a inhibitor which is referred as ncl2 ncl3 and ncl5 which has we when we uh, studied its activity it really inhibited this pathway very nicely in a nanomolar range and then we did in vitro and uh, culture as well as in vivo studies in mice model and true to our finding we could able to show that these three molecules which have they have been able to inhibit parasite culture and as well as in vivo parasite uh, uh, studies we did in p bergai model that it was five fold more effective than artemisinin and we now know why it is five fold more effective because it we know now that this uh, hybrid molecule is actually acting at hemoglobin degradation as well as hemozoin formation if you remember my previous studies which we published in pna we were earlier shown that artemis is only acting at the heme hemozoin to uh, heme to hemozoin formation now we have this molecule which is acting at both the step hemoglobin degradation and heme to hemozoin formation that's why it's working uh, much more uh, uh, nicely better than Uh, Artemis in alone, and we have been able to publish this work recently in European Journal of Medicinal Chemistry. Uh, we have completed the toxicology studies uh, uh, for these compounds. Uh, we are also since science only problem which we are getting recently that its water solubility is little less. So we are trying to make it more water soluble. In the meantime, with oil emulsion, we are going further. for uh, for its uh, clinical trials so in summary we have been able to i today in my talk i have been able to show you i hope i am able to convince you that artemisinin and chloroquine acts on multiple pathway in parasite life cycle that's why they are more effective so it not uh, it not only acts at the hemoglobin degradation and hemozoin formation pathway but it also acts nicely in the proteasome uh, machinery of parasite so that parasite is uh, they are able to block the uh, the parasite uh, uh, shuttling uh, the proteins so that unfolded proteins are not accumulated uh, are accumulated in parasite and parasite doesn't survive so in summary we have been able to show that both chloroquine and artemisinin affect the hemoglobin Uh, de degradation and hemozoin formation is possible uh, and chloroquine are, are among these two molecules uh, inhibitor is acting at both the steps both uh, hemoglobin degradation and hemozoin formation while artemisinin is only blocking the hemozoin formation although it is a fast acting drug we are also able to show that these two inhibitors are acting particularly uh, pf uh, acting on a proteasome shuttle proteins artemisinin is mainly acting on pfdd1 which is not only a proteasome shuttle protein but also dna damage repair protein while chloroquine we believe we are studying this further that it is acting on the other two shuttle proteins uh, that this data is being generated by no and i am very uh, thankful to know that who has really done a remarkable work in this direction so these are the uh, my uh, students without their help i wouldn't have achieved what i presented today monica was the, who was responsible for identifying the the hemoglobin degradation and hemozoin formation complex which which is referred as degrado sicostrom and no single handedly handled the proteasome shuttle portion and identified the mechanism and of course we have been really lucky to have my colleagues uh, particularly dinesh gupta his student rajan pande dr asif mohammad and also our friend from uh, ncl pune ashish and uh, nasim who has been really great and his two students sonam and mayan for this yeast complementation and i personally believe that yeast complementation system might give us a new tool to study the function of various parasite proteins uh, and understand parasite biology these are some of the publication we have for the last uh, 10 to 12 years and uh, we have filed patents of the new drug which i have mentioned in my talk 
and uh, we are going further with and also trying to discover new uh, mostly water soluble molecule for again against these two pathway and we are going further with this already uh, identified drugs which we have i have mentioned in my talk and i am uh, thankful to icgb colleagues icgb is one of the great place to work uh, and icgb funding also and dbt dst and the three academies uh, who has uh, given me the fellowship uh, in India. Thanks uh, to all of you. And if you have a question, uh, I'll take it.